this, we are going to see the historical background of Indian constitution and the company rule and the crown rule. So here we are going to see what are the things that happen before getting independence. So before getting independence, uh, in 1680, the British East India Company came into India. In 1765, they acquired Diwani. That is, they acquired civil and revenue justice affairs. In 1857, due to Shippai Mutiny Revolt, British uh, East India Company destroyed, and in 1858, Crown Rule was established. Crown, law, crown Rule, in the sense, it is British Parliament directly come to India and they govern the Indian constitution. So in 1934, Yemen Roy suggested that India need a constitution. So in 1946, under the head of Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, Constitutional Assembly was formed. In 1950, January 26, constitution came into act, uh, which we are celebrating with this Republic Day. So uh, before getting independence, Two rules were followed, company rule and the crown rule. So under company rule, uh, what uh, the following of the act or regulations that are coming. So first one is regulating act of 1773. Next one is Pit India Act of 1784. Then Charter Act of 1830. Then Charter Act of 1833. And Charter Act of 1853. So under crown rule, the rules are Government of India Act of 1858. Indian Council Act of 1861, Indian Council Act of 1892, Indian Council Act of 1909, then Government of India Act of 1919, and Government of India Act of 1935, and Indian Independence Act of 1947. So company rule is the rule which was established by East India Company, and Crown rule is the rules and regulations that was given by British Parliament. Now we are going to see uh, Regulating Act of 1773. So in Regulating Act of 1773, the salient features are, it was the first step taken by the British Parliament to control over the affairs and trade of East India Company in India. It designated the Governor of Bengal as Governor General of Bengal. So Lord Warren Hastings became the first Governor General of Bengal. In this act, executive councils of the governor general was established with four members. There was no separate legislative council. It subordinated the governors of Bombay and Madras to the governor general of Bengal. The Supreme Court was established at Fort William, Calcutta as the apex court in 1774. It prohibited the servants of the company from engaging in any private trade or accepting bribes from the natives. Court of Directors, that is the governing body of the company, that is uh, should report its revenue to the British Parliament. So these are the features of Regulating Act of 1773. Then coming to Pit India Act of 1784, Pit India Act was named after the British uh, Prime Minister William Pitt. This, this act's main aim was to remove mistakes of Regulating Act of 1773. Uh, so Pitt India Act of 1784 distinguished between commercial and political functions of the company. Court of Directors will take over commercial functions and Board of Control will take over the political affairs. Court of Directors means it is East India Company and Board of Control means it is the British Parliament. So East India Company take over the commercial functions and uh, British Parliament take over the political affairs. So in this act, it reduced the strength of Governor General Council to three members as it was four in uh, before. Placed the Indian affairs under the direct control of British government. The company's territories in India were called the British position in India. Governor's Council were established in Madras and Bombay. So next act is Charter Act of 1830. 
So Charter Act of 1830 makes uh, more sense in the trade of uh, British uh, uh, trading. Uh, so it uh, gives the company's monopolies over Indian trade terminator. Trade with India open to all British subjects. Then Charter Act of 1833. So in Charter Act of 1833, uh, Governor General became the Governor General of India. The first Governor General of India was Lord William Bentick. This was the final step towards the centralization in British India. This is the final step that was taken by the British to make India as a centralized one and they are ready to govern the India. So beginning of central legislature, for India as the act also took away legislative powers of Bombay and Madras provinces. The act ended the activities of East India Company as a commercial body and it became purely administrative body. Then we have to see about Charter Act of 1853. So in Charter Act of 1853, the legislative and executive functions of the Governor General Councils were separated. Six members in Central Legislative Council, then four out of the six members were appointed by provisional government of Madras, Bombay, Bengal, and Agra. It introduced a system of open competition as the basis for the requirement of civil servants of the company. Indian civil service depended for all. Then, next act is the Government of India Act of 1858. So, it abolished the company rule in India. Uh, changed the designation of Governor General of India into Viceroy, abolished dual government, that is Board of Control and Court of Directors. Then Secretary of State designation came political head of India. So Charles Wood was the first Secretary of State of India. Lord Canning was the first Viceroy of India. He is the direct representative of the British Crown. So this is the final step taken by the British government to take over the India. So in uh, Government of India Act of 1858, the rule of the company was completely replaced by rule of the crown in India. The powers of British crown were to be exercised by the Secretary of State of India. He was assisted by the Council of India having 15 members. He was vested with a complete authority and control over the Indian administration to the Viceroy as his agent. The Governor General was made the Viceroy of India. Lord Cunning was the first Viceroy of India, abolished Board of Control and Court of Directors. That is, dual government was uh, abolished. So that's all about the Government of India Act of uh, 1858. So these are the uh, from company rules that are not followed during the period from 1765 to 1858. So the acts were the Living Act of 1773, Fit India Act of 1784, Charter Act of 1830, then Charter Act of 1833, and Charter Act of 1853. The Charter Act of 1853 is the final step for the British Parliament to take over completely the India. Then next one is uh, crown rule. So crown rule, in the crown rule, it is, uh, first one is Indian Council Act of 1861. So in Indian Council Act of 1861, it introduced for the first time Indian representation in the institution like Viceroy's Executive plus Legislative Council. Three Indians entered the Legislative Council. The Legislative Councils were established in center and provinces. It provided the Viceroy's Executive Council should have some Indians as the non-official members while transacting the legislative businesses. It accorded statutory organization to the portfolio system, initiated the process of decentralization by restoring the legislative powers to the Bombay and the Madras provinces. Next one is Government of India Act of 1919. This act is also known as Montek Shelms Code Reforms. The central subjects were demarcated and separated from those of provincial subjects. The scheme of dual governance diarchy was introduced in the provincial subjects. Under the diarchy system, the provincial subjects were divided into two parts, that is transfers, transferred and reserved 
on the third subject governor was not responsible to the legislative council the act introduced for the first time by cameralism at the center legislative assembly with 140 members and legislative council with 60 members direct elections are introduced in this uh, act the act also required that uh, that the three of six members of the viceroy executive council that to be indians provided for the establishment of public service commission so these are the main rule which are all coming under um, company rule and ground rule 